Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. They do say that the best way to learn anything is to, to get on with it and just do it. Learning by doing. Well, that's what I've been doing over the last few weeks. And I've taught myself to configure BSPWM, the window manager, Polybar and Rofi. I'll show you what I've been doing. Here's the intro. Okay, welcome back. So, uh, with time on my hands, uh, I've continued to play around with tiling window managers, and uh, for the last three weeks, I've forced myself uh, to stay in tiling window managers. I'll say right from the outset that I'm not yet convinced that they are entirely for me. Uh, what I am convinced about is that Marte desktop, the Marte desktop is probably something I won't be going back to because I've been so impressed with Openbox. However, it's about familiarity more than anything else. And once you get used to a different system, I've been surprised at how quickly I've started to adapt. And looking at new things is good. I mean, I've been a desktop user for 16 years now. And before I started this video channel, I have to admit I was getting a bit bored. Um, I'd learnt Linux back in the day when Linux really hurt. Uh, and that was a good thing because it forced you to learn because it just didn't work properly out of the box. Um, and... Once I'd learnt it all and I found the desktop environment that I liked, um, I sort of lost the excitement. It was regenerated again when I started this channel because that was something I wanted to do. And with time on my hands, I've started to dig into things that I've never touched before. So one of them has been um, the open box window manager. Uh, I really enjoyed doing that. Uh, I then played around with i3, and that was okay. You know, I, I didn't have a problem with it. But I thought, let's go out and let's do something completely different. Let's look at something that really isn't configured at all. And this is where BSP WM sits. It's a window manager. It manages windows. It doesn't manage your key bindings. It doesn't have a status bar it just manages your windows and on its own it can do absolutely nothing so you have to put it together with a program that manages your key bindings and if you want a status bar well you have to go out and find one and decide what you're going to use uh, and in my case I, I've chosen polybar I have to say that the bar probably took longer to get to grips with than anything else and in fact that was the case with x monad and qtile which i still haven't cracked and i will crack in the end but i've now cracked polybar it took an awful long time but i've really enjoyed the experience i'm really happy with the desktop that i've got up and running which is not just a window manager anymore it's my own desktop environment and uh I thought some of you, with time on your hands, might like to have a play doing the same things. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the basic installation on a VM and then bring you back to my desktop. It won't be a long video. It will be food for thought. And a lot of the ideas that I've picked up from the great and the good out there, um, I'll include links uh, in the video description. So let's kick off and have a look at the VM. So I'm just going to run through how I installed a BSPWM and Polybar. I'm using uh, my virtual machine, Endeavor OS, which seems to have become my trusty demo VM. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's Arch, though an Arch-based distro, you can do it in any distro you could name. What I actually did was I went to the Arch Wiki 
and again it doesn't really matter what distro you use the arch wiki is a good starting place because there's a couple of packages that you're going to need to install irrespective of which distro uh, you actually use the first one is a package called bspwm uh, this is in the standard pacman repos of arch and in debian or ubuntu you can also install it as per normal you will also need to install a small package called sxhkd this is because bspwm doesn't have a method of actually managing key bindings it has to use a separate program which in this case is sxhkd what an awful name <laughs> but uh yeah so you'll need to install that as well if that isn't installed you will have no way to actually get around bspwm so install both both of them they're quite small programs it doesn't take very long either an apt get install or a, a pacman minus s install either will work depending upon what repo you're in i also decided to install polybar you have a few options with bspwm uh, a lot of people seem to run something called lemon bar and there is a a bspwm bar as well but polybar seems to be the most popular so i went over to again the arch wiki and there's an aur package polybar and i install that with yay and then i went about setting it up now once you've got the packages installed do not just try and uh, log into bspwm because you won't get anywhere first of all you're going to have to create your configuration files so i've done this in my dot config directory first create a directory called bspwm in your dot config directory and also uh, create a directory called sxhkd in your dot config directory whilst you're there you might as well also create a directory Paul, called polybar right now all three of those directories are, are going to be completely empty at the moment so what you need to do is you need to copy over example configuration files and for bspwm and ss sxh kdrc or ss I can't even say this. SXHKD. You'll find them in USR Share Doc BSPWM examples. So you literally just fire up a terminal, CP USR Share Doc BSPWM examples, and you first copy over a file called BSPWMRC and SXHDRC into their respective directories i'm not going to show you how to do this it's all here just follow along with polybar it's pretty much the same process you've created a directory in your uh, dot config uh, directory you need to copy over the example configuration from usr share doc poly polybar config and put it into that directory you've just created and along with that, the Arch Wiki actually has a little script there. If you create a script in your polybar directory called launch.sh, copy this into it, and then do a chmod plus x to make it executable, this will control how polybar actually starts. So that's it in a nutshell install bspwm install the key bindings program install polybar again at this stage do not try and log in first of all 
Let's go to BSPWM to see what it says. Your default BSPWMRC file, which isn't really a configuration file, to be honest, it's pretty small. The only thing it has in it, and ignore these two entries here, which I've just put in, is it has SXHKD and the ampersand, which means that when you start up BSPWM, it's saying you should start up the key bindings file uh, at the same time, which is a good idea, otherwise you won't be able to do anything and you'll have to crash out. What I've actually put in here is I've put in a link to uh, a little script I've got running to set my uh, resolution, XR and R. If you're just running a single screen setup, you're probably not going to need anything like this. But uh, on VirtualBox, I found that uh, there was no way to set this as full HD um, just by logging in. I have to have a script in order to do it, and it, and it might as well run as I'm logging in. You're also going to need to launch Polybar. You'll remember that we copied that script across. Um, and so I've literally just pointed the BSPWM config file to that launch.sh script. Okay, other than that, you've got 10 monitors already set up and a couple of little options as far as what the border width is and the window gap, etc., etc. But essentially... I've done nothing there. Right, let's move on to the SXHK um, config file. This literally is all of the default key bindings for, for your window manager. Now, you can change any of these, and it's actually quite easy to work, work with. Uh, it's uh, relatively simple as far as formatting is concerned. It's not like when you use Xmonad and you're messing about with Haskell or uh, Python in Qtile. It's a nice, straightforward, plain text file. The one thing you do need to take note of, though, right from the word go, is right at the beginning, there's an entry there for Terminal Emulator, and it's the super key, which is actually your Windows key, plus return, as it seems to be with most of the window managers. However, by default, this wants to run URXVT. In other words, the RXVT Unicode terminal. And if you don't have that installed, you can be hitting super plus return all day long and you will not get a terminal. In fact, I made that mistake right from the word go and I had to open a TTY and uh, restart LightDM to actually get out of the system. So install URXVT, or alternatively, if you prefer a different program, put the name of the program there. I actually use Terminator, so I replaced URXVT with Terminator. Last but not least, um, your Polybar config. This is a, a work of, uh, the, well, it takes more to configure this than it takes to configure BSP uh, WM. So I'm not going to go into this at all, other than to say that the standard bar that we've just copied in is called example. But the launch script that we copied from the Arch Wiki was called my bar, or it had my bar in. So you need to make a quick change to that. And at the bottom of the script where it says launch polybar, it shouldn't have polybar my bar, followed by the ampersand. It should have polybar example, followed by the ampersand. Phew. Okay, let's see how we get on. And I'll show you what you should see right from the word go. So I will lo log out of this VM, or rather I'll log out of... Marte, and we should get up the light DM screen. You can already see I've lost the resolution here, 
And so if I didn't have that little script, I wouldn't be able to get it back. And let's log into BSPWM and hope it all works. Okay. So this is your default. You can see that uh, somewhere within Endeavor, they hard code this wallpaper in. But of course, as soon as the X Randa settings have changed, it goes all over the place. You have up on your left the 10 workspaces. You can actually click with your mouse if you want to, to go to these different workspaces. And you have a few little uh, bits and pieces, it's like a status bar here, telling you various things. I'm not quite sure what all of these are actually telling me. I can see that's uh, an IP address. That's my time. Presumably, that's my... Uh, GB keyboard, who knows? Right, so from here, I've actually got UR, URXVT installed on this. If I hit super key plus enter, hello, <laughs> what's this later? That came from Endeavor, so I've no idea what that was. But if I hit uh, super key plus enter, it will open a terminal. If I do it again, It'll open another terminal. If I do it again, it'll open another terminal. If I do super key W, 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 it will close the terminals. So this is your starting point with BSPWM. And you can do an awful lot with it. So let's come out of this VM now, and I'll go into my install system. Right, so we're out of the VM now, and we're back at uh, my main screen. And as you can see, it now looks quite different. I've been playing around with this now for about two weeks, um, and I've had the time to do quite a bit of messing. Um, as you can see, I've got little icons up here rather than uh, numbered uh, workspaces. No one, two, three, four but uh, little uh, awesome icons. Uh, in order to get them, I did have to install the awesome font. And in order to configure it, I stole a, a section out of a DT's polybar dot file. I I'll put a link to that uh, in the description. Uh, I didn't use the whole of DT's configuration for polybar, but his and a whole range of other dot files that I found on on uh, GitHub and GitLab sort of form the basis of how I built up my polybar config. You'll also see that I've got a number of what we call modules running on the right hand side. So CPU percentage, memory, down speed, up speed, uh, a little applet here that's given me the combined uh, Pac-Man and AUR updates and date and time. And I've also got my system tray there. What did I do to get it looking like this? Well, to start off with, if we go to my uh, BSPWM config file, it's fairly similar to the one, the example one that I showed you. The main changes here are, I've uh, still got the SSXHKD uh, start up line in it I haven't got the other lines in it because I've put that elsewhere and I'll show you that in a minute but what I had to do was actually set up my uh, system on a multi-screen basis I've got two screens and what I decided to do was to put uh, screens one two three four on my primary monitor which is called DP-2-2. You'll get those those names just by running xrander minus Q. And uh, workspace 5, 6, 7, 8 on my second monitor. I believe in theory that you could actually run 10 workspaces for each display, but I'm not quite sure how you'd shift round then. Um these are independent workspaces tied to each screen. 
I certainly don't need more than eight workspaces. So it just made sense for me to put the first four on my main screen, the next four on my second. I did encounter a minor problem. Uh, the minor problem was that uh, I think BSP uh, WM likes to always think that the screen on the left is, is your main screen. And the screen on the right is the second screen, so it's going in a logical order. I actually have my setup slightly different. I have my main screen on the right, and then my second screen on the left. And when I was trying to move between workspaces, it seemed to be getting confused until some Google searching brought up this command which seemed to swap that assumption round, and it's all working good ever since. Um, I still do launch Polybar and SXHKD from my BSPM config file. In terms of the key bindings file, uh, I haven't made a huge amount of changes. I've changed my terminal emulator to Terminator, which is what you're seeing here. Um, what else have I done? I've added a couple of shortcuts to things like Chromium, PC Man FM, Genie, and a couple of scripts I've got that are using Rofi. Uh, what else have I done? Right, yeah. So, I think I mentioned this in, in, in a previous video, that actually I had started to use light dm to start things up and i've actually put um a link in the light dm config file to the xranda command I, I i've basically saved an xranda command into a script with a r and r i've put that into a usr share and then in my light dm.com file i've linked that script there so that xranda sets up the resolution as soon as lightdm launches if i put my xranda script in here what i was finding was with the dual monitors it kept messing it up and messing up my wallpaper so i wanted a way of starting xrnr before that even happened okay um so that was really good. I might do a little video on that. What I also did is I created um, a startup file, which is pretty much the same as I used in the likes of Openbox. But again, I've linked this into LightDM. So if you look here at the script, uh, I've created a script called run.bspwm in USR share. And I have the standard things here, you know, set up Compton, uh, set up uh, Polkit authentication. So if you launch something like Synaptic, it prompts you for a password. Um, I've done my nitrogen restore there for my wallpaper. I've got my Mate volume icon, which is uh, up there. I've got my network manager applet, my Pamac tray. I forced the key keyboard to be GB. I found that without that setting, it was going back to US each time. I've got the X screensaver there, and uh, the last command is BSPWM. Okay, so how have I used that script? Well, like DM actually looks in USR share X sessions every time you log in. So if I cd to USR uh, share, oops, it helps if I can type. I'm still suffering with that. Yeah, X sessions. And if I go to BSP, Right, let's just list what's the BSPWM desktop. Okay, so cat. Uh, 
BSP W Desktop. This is created as soon as you install BSPWM, and it's just a desktop file. And this is all it contains, the name, BSPWM, a comment, binary space partitioning, window manager, and then a link to the exec file. Now, originally, this just contained the word BSPWM. What I've done on the exec line is I've pointed it to that script, run.bspwm, and what it does, as I log into LightDM, it runs that script, and it starts up all those applications before BSPWM finishes loading, and I've found it's resolved so many issues. When I was just sticking them all in, in the standard BSPWM config file, as I say, XRANDA was causing me problems. Um, some of my little applets uh, in my system tray weren't launching. It's just taken away lots of issues. I'm sure there's many ways to do this, but that's the way that I did it. What else have I done? Um, oh, yes, I configured my polybar, of course. Um, so if I cd.config or cd back to start off with, and then cd.config, poly. There's a whole range of things in here. Some of it is, well, in fact, pretty much all of it is taken from lots of different people's dot .files. I have some general settings at the top. I've then created two different bar sections, a primary screen bar, which I've just called bar one, where on the left-hand side, this one that you can see, I've got something called the BSPWM module, which shows all these little icons. And on the right, I've got CPU, memory, etc., etc. I've then created a second bar and... Uh, that's for my secondary screen, and I'll just briefly show you that. Uh, where are we? And you will see on here that actually you won't see any of the modules on the right-hand side. I just have basically the icons for the desktop. So Then after the screen, uh, we have the various modules that I can use along with the little icons, the awesome icons that I've used. So, yeah, um, works pretty well. What I found in using this is um, I was missing some things that you take for granted in a desktop environment. And just, just how to launch one of the applications. So I created, you know, a couple of shortcuts. So... If, for instance, I wanted to launch a file manager, I, I just use super alt F and the file man manager launches. Um, I wanted an easier way to do that, though, because I didn't want to create shortcuts for every single application that I use. I could have used D menu, and I've used that in the past, but I saw lots of references to this uh, little program that works like D menu called Rofi. And uh, that's it. And there's even a way to include your icons there. And you just search for whatever you're searching for. And uh, I really like that. I, I've found that I'm using that all the time. Um, now, I've said before, when I was using i3, I had real problems as well, uh, remembering the, uh, the keyboard shortcuts. Well... To the rescue, <laughs> again, using Rofi. Here they all are. I've got a cheat sheet that I can just bring up with my uh, Super Z uh, key binding, which is brilliant. These are all little scripts that I found all over the place, and uh, I, I will put links to them uh, in, in the video description. I've changed some of them around a little bit, but you'll see where they're based off. Also, um, I didn't want to just crash out of the system. I, I wanted the option when I finished to 
log out, to restart, to shut down completely. And so another little Rofi script. Um, so cancel that, log out, shut down, reboot, suspend. Absolutely brilliant. I, I've been playing with Rofi a lot. Uh, one that I've just done is uh, a, a fine script. Um, again, the basics stolen off uh, Tinterweb. So if I wanted to go into BSPWM, for instance, I can see down there, there's the script. Um, just click on that, and uh, it opens up the script in Genie. So actually, <laughs> it's starting to become workable. Now, BSPWM itself, um, it has an unusual way of uh, placing windows. It's almost like in a spiral. I can keep doing this, and they just get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, I don't so much mind, because the chances of me ever using more than three sections of the screen are pretty unlikely. So let, let's keep two terminals open there. Now, at the moment, they are tiled. I could make one of them full screen by hitting Super F, or I could go back to the standard tile layout. I could also uh, float one by hitting Super S, and if it's floating, I can move it about with the mouse and uh, do all the normal jiggery-pokery that you do and then go back to the tile layout. There's also um, what they call the monocle layout, which is a little bit like stacked. So there's the monocle layout, and if I just put DFH there as something to see, and I wanted to go to the window behind it, uh, there you go, and super C, I switch between them. So... Yeah, it does everything else. You know, I can move between screens. I I quite like the fact that it's mouse-friendly. I have different things on uh, different workspaces. And so far, it's just working for me. I've been quite surprised, but uh, I'm actually learning to like it. What I'm doing, of course, is what everybody does when you go into one of these basic window managers. I'm building something that does nothing but manage windows into its own desktop environment, which is what it's all about. Right, so uh, that's how I've been keeping myself busy. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I have to say... Probably because it's taken so much work, I enjoy the finished result more than I enjoyed i3, which is a fine window manager, but um, I prefer BSPWM, even though it is a mouthful. Uh, why can't Linux just come up with simple names? I, I really don't know. There are some real disadvantages to using BSPWM, and I'll tell you right now, the documentation is appalling. So you have to get your Google foo head on and do some real Googling to find answers. Uh, but apart from that, you know, the, the information's out there. You'll find it on the likes of Reddit and uh, in various configuration files on GitHub and GitLab, and you'll figure it out. That's what I did. So uh, what else have I got on? Well, I, I tell you, it's really triggered uh, my interest again and I've started looking at other little projects that have been in the back of my mind that I've not touched um, I'm currently uh, having a go at configuring a Neo Mutt for email um, which is a bit of a pig to configure but I've got it working sort of um, and I'm determined I am going to start looking at Vi I tend to use GUI text editors most of the time. Genie is what I'm using at the moment. But uh, I, I'll go to the likes of Nano when forced to, really, when uh, working as root or with sudo. I don't do much. I, I know how to copy and paste. and I, I know how to save and how to exit. That's about it. So would it be easier using Vim? Well, perhaps it would. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. 
I know how to go into the different modes in Vim and how to save a file and exit. So the basics, but I've never looked deeper than that. The point is, I suppose, what I'm trying to say is the more work that you have to do, the more interest it seems to generate, or it does for me anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And, you know, if you want to give it a go, give it a go. Uh, I'm playing with lots of different things at the moment, and I'm not going to just focus on these quite technical aspects on the videos. I'm, I'm going to do my standard reviews in between. But these rambly sort of this is what I've been doing videos uh, are certainly going to become more a part of what I produce. Now I'm likely to be producing um, three or four videos a week. So, um, yeah, the only thing I'd say from here is don't forget to join me on Library. And we do have the, the old tech bloke uh, Facebook group is growing. I think there's 25, 26 of us there now. I'm not really a social media person, so I didn't want to go on Discord or anything else. But a little group on Facebook for a small amount of people is great. I'll probably do things like, you know, save my config files there because I don't think I'm ready to, to go to GitHub or GitLab yet. But uh, so come and join us by all means. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you later in the week. Thank you.